whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whomsoever Allah allows to be misguided, there is none who can guide. I give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship, but Allah, highly glorified is he. He has no partner in his dominion of his creation. I give further testimony that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, to whom the Quran was revealed, is his servant and messenger. Allah's prayers and peace be on him. Prayers and peace be extended to his family, his companions, and all those who gather in righteousness. And what follows thereafter, I mean. O you who believe, have taqwa for Allah as it is his right to be the recipient, the object of taqwa, and die not except as Muslims. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Muslims. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another day of gathering, another day of, uh, of Juma, a day of conscious obedience, a day where we are able to come together uh, in person or in spirit, but we come together with the intention of remembering the higher purpose, the higher calling on our lives. And that is something that we thank Allah for. We thank Allah for giving us this, this way of life. We thank Allah for giving us the clarity of this deen and for the obligations that are incumbent upon us as believers. Because ours is not one, our faith is not one where we simply profess belief. We profess belief and then we go about the business of acting on that belief. We go about the business of discharging the responsibilities that we are inheritors of, the successive generation, the successive authority of the Khalifa. So alhamdulillah, in today's brief khutbah, we want to address the theme of word power is world power. That's word power is world power. So we begin by, uh, with Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, the uh, first ayah. Um, Alif, Lam, Alif Lam Mim. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّكِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ لَذِينَ This is the book, and it is guided sure without doubt to those who fear Allah. And it's, you know, uh, you, you can look, you can look and see the, uh, you know, as you're reading the, 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 the marks uh, that you follow for the Tajweed, you see there's a pause. You can make up, there's a pause that you're required to make in one or two spots. Uh, and it's after, um, and you know, if you stop at the, the fee, uh, this is the book and it is guided sure without doubt, right? And it is guided sure without doubt. So the Reba, stopping there. And uh, to, to pause and to really reflect and to think on the enormity, the enormity of this message, the capacity of this message, the capacity for uh, a true egalitarianism, a capacity for true uh, equality. Uh, and this, this should make us think. It should make us think, number one, because we recognize that we're not in a society, a global society, not just uh, the society that, that we are in within these United States, but we're not in a society where equality is the norm, where equity is the norm. We're in a society where interests are secured, where interests, matter of fact, this word interest, we hear interests quite a bit, not just from a personal standpoint, but we hear about interest from uh, on a national, and in the, the national lexicon, when we're talking about the faith and the, uh, the well-being or the security of nations, people talk about, nations talk about their national interest. And they act according to their national interest. They act according to what is profitable, what, is, what gives them an advantage, what serves the mission of their, uh, of their existence. And in doing so, that leaves, a, that leaves a, a, a large door open. And the door that's opened is they act out of interest. They don't act out of obedience. They don't act out of obedience to Allah, they don't act out of 
a sense of a commitment uh, to do justice, to be just. They don't act out of that understanding or awareness of a higher power and a higher purpose for their existence, for their being. They act out of what is best for them. And in doing so, that leaves a lot of room for corruption. But I want to take a moment and look at this word, Mareba. So it comes from, and I actually I meant to bring in, uh, because I just wanted to hold it up. Uh, and maybe after the, uh, the khutbah, after we concluded, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, many of my fellow students, you have this book, uh, and there are many different books that, that serve the purpose, many different dictionaries. There's one uh, that I have, you know, we all have our favorites, and I have one that's the, uh, uh, the, the Arabic dictionary of the Quran. It's, it comes with, it's a brown, like a brown leather cover. And uh, I want to mention this just as a tool, because as I'm giving, um, sharing a definition, I want to make sure that we're sharing the resources uh, that we use to come to the conclusions uh, or that, that shape the perspectives that we share. Right. That is that is, first of all, this goes back to the idea of interest. Right. The accumulation of knowledge. Uh, it is not to serve the interests of the individual. The accumulation of knowledge is to serve the entirety of community. Right. And that is a communal endeavor. So that being said, um, the root of the word uh, uh, and it's basically mean, meaning is to make uncertain. Cast one into doubt, calamity, suspicion, disturb, cause doubt, cause uneasiness of mind, cause affliction, create evil opinion, make false charge. Now, as it's used, uh, and, and it's, it's worth pointing out, worth reminding ourselves that the beauty of the Arabic language, the beauty of Semitic languages in Arabic in particular, is that it is in alignment with the natural way of thinking. Right. It is an organic language where you you move from one uh, meaning and there is a there is an evolution. There is a, a trajectory that you can follow uh, as you look at a particular word. Right. We often you know, use fataha, right? and we, we, for the opening. And we understand we get mifta, Right. We have key. Right. Same root letters. Right. So and this is also uh, this also points to uh, uh, an exercise. Right, for the mind, for us to think in those terms, there should be a connection. Right, when we hear this, this statement, follow the, follow the matter through to its logical conclusion. That's Arabic. That's organic thinking. That is the thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually placed within us. That is the desired method of thinking. The, there's a predictable method that we're able to, to move along, you know, that makes sense, and not just to the mind, but to the soul. So, um, but as it's used in this particular ayah, uh, uh, rape, uh, it means doubt, affliction, or calamity, false charge, disquietude, or uneasiness of mind. Such doubt as is based on prejudice or suspicions and not the doubt, which helps in research and promotion of knowledge. I'm going to stop there. Actually, they're, they're uh, there's a there's a bevy of uh, of, of meaning uh, within this word, um, which you know, which kind of adds the beauty, the possibility, you know, of understanding. But I want to go back to this. I want to repeat this. These last this last section here it says, um, such doubt as is based on prejudice or suspicions, and not the doubt which helps in research and promotion of knowledge. So we think about the, uh, the implications of that shade of that meaning and its use in terms of, in its relation to the book, in relation to the Quran, right? This, this glorious book, this book that makes things clear, this book that gives an evident truth, this book that gives us guidance, clear guidance. It is a book that um, that does not, not only does it not have an interest, uh, any particular individual or people as the foci of its, um, of its uh, delivery or of its message, but it is also not one that is based on, um, in addition to not being based on prejudice, 
um, uh, it goes against this idea, the doubt which helps in research and promotion of knowledge, right? There, there, are two different, there are two different types of doubt. There's a doubt that can lead to prejudice. There's a doubt that can lead to divisiveness and harm. And then there's the doubt that, actually, that can actually elevate, that actually contribute to the individual and the communal well-being. And we think about Ibrahim, we think about him as he had serious doubt. He had doubt about the, the conviction of his people. He had doubt about their sanity. He had doubt about, this, this, this doesn't make any sense. How are you going to make idols and then worship the idols? Right? This, it, you, you actually do it. You're devoted to these idols. You come in. You stop. You look. You know, you wait for them to tell you something. Did you, did you have amnesia? Did you forget you made these things? So the doubt, it moved him. It moved him to, to question. And it moved him. It moved him to, to, to a scientific uh, inquiry. It moved him to, to assess, to analyze, right? To observe and to analyze. And he went out and he looked and then he goes and he looks at these cycles, right? Brilliance and then a recession, right? The sun comes and leaves the moon, the stars, and he comes to a conclusion, right? And that conclusion, that conclusion, that and that proclamation of the oneness of Allah, right? We refer to Ibrahim salam, as the same in faith, right? And it is the millah, it is the way of Ibrahim, it is the, that, that we follow. It is the station of Ibrahim that we visit, that we stop in when we perform our, our, our tawaf, when we go and perform the hajj. And not just as a, as a physical gesture, but a gesture, but as, as, a, as, a, as a reminder in the company of humanity, in the company of humanity, we each, we want to be in, not, in that space. We want to occupy that space. We want to stand on that ground in those footsteps that there is no God but God, right? We want to stand on Tawheed and understand that within Tawheed that there is no particular interest for any, any individual. There's obligation, right? There's obligation that we have in our understanding of Tawheed. But we also understand because and, and, and the, the point here, the idea is word power is world power. Word power is world power. So we recognize that there is a, an effort, there is a, an approach to knowledge that is interested, that is focused on the other meaning, right? The other side of doubt. And it is not a doubt that promotes uh, the benefit or that is a, a, a part of righteous research and a promotion of knowledge. It is the doubt which leads to prejudice. It is a doubt which leads to suspicion. And that is a, and that unfortunately is where we find ourselves at this particular time, and we've been in this time, we got to understand also, when we say in this particular time, we're not talking about 2022. All right, we're talking about this time of thought, which goes back millennia. It is, it's, it's not confined to 2022. So we've been in this time for, 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 for a little while. So I want to go down to uh, uh, the 30th ayah. Bismillah. I'm just going to read the uh, uh, English uh, for time. It says, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Behold, thy Lord said to the angels, I will create a vice gerund on earth. They said, Wilt thou place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood, whilst we do celebrate thy praises and glorify thy holy name? He said, I know what ye know not. <laughs> I know what ye know not. We hear this all the time. Truly, the law speaks the truth. Uh, there, there are two words in here. So as the angels are making this uh, argument based on Allah's statement, we have, uh, let me see, where are we at? I 
atajalu fiha man man yufsidu. So yufsidu, this is referring to uh, corruption, right? But it's, it's not just corruption, it's corruption, and there's an association with violence with it, right? Yufsidu fiha wa yufsiku wa yufsiku dima'a. And this, uh, so it is um, uh, uh, corruption and uh, one that will that will shed blood, right? As 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 it said, one that will shed blood. All right. So here we are, and we are looking at this particular. And as I said, you know, not looking at time as uh, at just this particular point, but looking at a history, a history of time wherein the, the concerns that the angels brought up, I mean, w w was, was it wrong? Now, of course, Allah knows best, right? Aside from what we see, what we see does not abrogate or take away our responsibility to produce a different environment for humanity for ourselves, for our communities. It doesn't take that away. But the fact is, for those who understand the word, for those who understand the reticence, uh, the reticence of, of the words, the spirit conveyed here from the angels, they understand that that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity to, to take people away from the guidance wherein is, uh, wherein is liberation to take them away from a guidance that allows them to see a, a bigger picture, a bigger opportunity and possibility for themselves, and to actually bring about the, uh, the environment, the environment that Allah did not intend. Allah did not intend this as the environment for us. This is, not, this is not what he has given us the charge, the responsibility of stewardship for and, and leadership. This is not, this is not the environment, but that he intended, but it certainly is the environment that we find ourselves uh, living in. We find ourselves living in um, a, a time and an environment where blood is shed and has been shed consistently without regard, without pause, no hesitation. We'll expound on that um, a little bit more in a moment. I want to bring attention, uh, last I want to bring up this, this other uh, I, uh, first ayat of uh, Surah Tunisa. Uh, this is probably one we, we, we hear a lot. We refer to the, uh, the state of creation of humanity, right? The nafsin wahida, right? That Allah says, oh, humanity, oh, mankind, reverence your guardian Lord who created you from a single person from a single soul from a single soul this word uh i want to also share quickly just a few of these additional meanings and then bring this to where we are in terms of word power meaning world power the soul what we what is translated as soul or person it also means the reality behind. It means heart. It means life. It means uh, appetites. It means a hidden reality which is beyond human perception. And that one, that one just jumped out at me. They, they, they jumped out at me. The hidden reality that is beyond human perception. Right? We, uh, and this is, this is what binds us as a human family. When we talk about the human experience, we talk about how uh, you don't have to speak the same language as someone, but you could be in a room with people who speak a different language and they're laughing and that laughter could, 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 could uh, you know, it caused you to laugh, right? And, and, and the same would go, uh, to come into a room where a group of people, a family has just lost a loved one and they're, they're grieving and you feel that grief. You feel sad. You may, you may not even know the person, but it is the human experience. It is the uh, reality, which is beyond what we can 
uh, physically perceive. And that is the human experience. And that is what connects us. That is what joins us. And that is worth and that is sacred. That is also one of the other uh, implications of this word. It is, it, is a, it is a sense of sacredness created from the earth, sacred earth, a sacred and a shared experience. And we're still talking about word power is world power. But see, if these things, if, if these things that we take to be evident, these things that we take to be um, uh, without question, right, and, and believe wholeheartedly that Allah has created us from a single soul, from a single experience and a single awareness that connects, that binds us, that allows us to recognize the humanity, not just in ourselves, but the humanity and the stranger, right? It connects us. If we believe that the book that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a book of guidance that does not favor any particular group of people, does not favor you based on your gender, your ethnicity, your class, it does not favor you. And if, and if we believe that we were created with a noble sense of stewardship, a noble creation created in the best of modes and an excellent mode, if we believe all, the, all these things, then we have to ask ourselves, then how did we get, how are we in this particular predicament? Well, we are in the predicament that we are in because the words have been, have been uh, as, 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 as is mentioned in the Quran, talks about those who change the words from their proper places, those who take the book for show, they take pages out, those who pervert the, the word, those who cover it up, and those who pervert it. And right now, the greatest perversion that is inflicting humanity Right, and there are a bunch of subsets that we can get into underneath it. But the greatest perversion, right? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll make this, uh, this caveat. We understand that the greatest oppression is false worship, right? That is the greatest wrongdoing and the greatest oppression. And that which takes us out of, really out of the possibility for forgiveness. The only thing that takes us away from that. False worship. But in terms of perversions of knowledge, perversions of the word, white supremacy, it is the most destructive perversion of the human soul. I didn't say mind, I say the soul. It poisons the soul. It attempts to negate the word of Allah and the intention of Adam al-Islam's creation. It attempts to negate the uh, uh, revelation as a liberating force, as a freeing force as a force that can turn the doubt which is good, which can turn that into the opportunity or the inspiration for research, for thinking, for questioning that brings us to an elevated position, right? The doubt of, 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 uh, of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? The questioning of Ibrahim, the questioning of, of, of all the prophets, the questioning of, of any righteous and, and right-minded individual faced with an issue, faced with a problem, and part of the doubt is to say, well, you know what? Is this perpetual? Is this something that is just existing without remedy? Or what can I do? Has Allah given me tools where I can actually address this and change, change this, this uh, circumstance? What do I need to do? What do I, what do I need to look at? Right? They told me I couldn't do it, but I think I can. That type of doubt has moved us forward. That has moved us forward as a human family. And that is, that is the type of doubt that we want to encourage. But in today's modern global society, white supremacist thinking is pervasive. It, it is the bedrock. It undergirds uh, science, politics, economics, entertainment, culture, religion. And because of that perversion, because of that perversion, when the word is perverted, everything that comes from it is perverted. 
when the word is perverted, then your, your, your political views will be perverted. Your economic system will be perverted. What you consider to be entertainment will be perverted. The culture that, that, uh, that, that you may bask in, there will be elements of perversion in it. And religion as well, and we, and we know we've got a long and documented um, history of the perversion of the word, the perversion of, of its understanding and its implementation. We think back to Pope, uh, Pope Urban, right? Pope Urban, who signed off on the enslavement of Africans, right? That is a, a perversion of religion. We think about uh, within the, 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 the history of the, uh, of, of, the, of the church, when they start selling, uh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, they start selling blessings, basically. We'll sell you, give us some money. We'll, we'll raise the money. It's a fundraiser. We're going we're gonna to give you a uh, paper that absolves you of some sins. Give us some money, and here you go. Here's your paper. You got your sin to go. And, and we have it also within our own uh, tradition within the, the history of Islam, we have perversions. We have perversions that have that have served the needs or the interest of a few, and have let the majority fall by the wayside. That have turned the majority into victims, or turned a particular group into outcasts. So we are not, we are not, uh, we're not free of blame, right? Uh, of that association. But it's an association that Allah has blessed us to be able to uh, to be able to see. It's an association that we have been through our circumstances where we are right now in this particular moment. Well, Allah has allowed us to see that there is something wrong. There's something wrong with this picture. Where Allah has blessed us to not be those who simply go off just of what we see. What we see, and that's it. No, no. No, our, our connected experience is one where we recognize the reality which is beyond human perception. The believers are those who believe in the unseen. So we have, we have, F, F, we have a matter of fact, within, this, within our country, the history of our nation, we have a history of pseudoscience and people, quack science, just quacks, people who have called themselves scientists and were absolute imbeciles, absolute imbeciles, because the, the word, as they understood it, was so perverted and was so imbued with uh, a sense of, of, of bigotry and prejudice, right? Their understanding of their words, right? It moved them to, to look for absolutely uh, ridiculous connections. We think about some of our story institutions today. We think about Harvard as, as you know, the, the, the creme de la creme, right? Harvard and Princeton and, uh, and William and Mary and, you know, and all of these, these Ivy League schools. But you study their history and you see that they have been the bedrock. They have been a, a, a bedrock of, uh, and a wellspring of proliferating white supremacist ideology whether they were talking about phrenology, whether it was uh, the, the uh, conversations about eugenics, whether the, it was their uh, connection between the work of Darwin and trying to prove that uh, Africans were somehow a subspecies. This is a perversion. This is a sickness. But we have, we have systems, we have institutions that have been built on that perversion. And so much so that in today's time, it is so embedded, it is so embedded that people don't need to talk about. They don't need to say they're a, a white supremacist or they subscribe to white supremacist ide ideology. Matter of fact, it's a lot of really nice people that are white supremacists, right? They don't, they don't even understand. They don't even understand that they are, that they have imbibed this, this ideology. But it is in the it has been placed into the soil and into the souls of our nation because the word has been perverted. And the word produces institutions, it produces our economic systems, it produces, like I said, everything, all of these facets 
that 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 um that that make our uh, society. And when that happens, like I said, when that happens, everything else that comes from it is going to be tainted. So there's a Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him, said, the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The upper hand is one that gives and the lower hand is one that takes. If you're familiar with the, uh, um, uh, the, the Bible, you, 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 for me, you, you've heard of, uh, what is it? Blessed are those who give, right? Uh, the, um, I'm paraphrasing, but it's a, it's a consistent uh, it is a consistent uh, encouragement to those who believe to be charitable. This particular word, right? Imagine this word as the basis for an economic uh, system. Just this, just right here. And there's a sign in that for the scientific mind. All right, just the uh, encouragement, just the statement to think about uh, 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 to, to know that the hand that gives is better than the hand that receives, right? It would lead to some observation and to some uh, analysis. What have I been blessed with? What do I have to offer? What are, where are the others like me? Where are those who can benefit from what I have? That is a healthy expression of, of inquiry. That is a healthy uh, assessment of, of, of power as well. But the perverted mind says, what do I have? Where are my talents? Where are those like me? And let's find a way to find those who don't have our abilities and subdue them. Let's find a way to use our power to keep them in a, uh, uh, in a dependent state. That's a perversion. It is a perversion. We see it. We see it evidently in the institutions, not just in the in the national institutions, but in global institutions. We see this in our global institutions, those institutions that are supposed to be uh, on their face, they say that they are here or they exist to uh, promote democratic values, to protect human dignity, to allow for uh, progress in the so-called developing world, the developing world, which was way more developed than the rest of the world has been, but the words they use in their descriptions, it paints a different picture. And those people who are considered dependent and those people who are considered developing, these are all, these are all non-white peoples, black or brown, these are all melanated peoples. Right? And this is only important because it serves the uh, it serves the interest and the end of white supremacist ideology. Right? And so which means that it is an exact opposition to you and I, it is an exact opposition to our understanding as Muslims. Right, the guidance that we have been given, that there's no interest, there's no particular interest in this for, for us as individuals, that places us above. And we also understand that what we want to attain is not just material wealth, we do want our share of this dunya, but we want to be seen as pleasing, as pleasing by our creator, as pleasing. Uh, to Allah, right? Which means that we want to be of the Salihin. We want to be of the righteous. And the road to righteousness is a word, is a road that is lined with service. It is a road that is lined with conviction and courage and the willingness to stand up in the face of injustice. So the way we gain distinction is not the same way that distinction is laid out. I want to close the, this first portion of the clip by by, by simply mentioning, when I talk about the, the white supremacist ideology and how it is pervasive, not just nationally, but, but it is a global, um, and, and phenomenon is not the, the right word. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give that shortly in the, uh, the, 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 the closing portion of the combat. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, 
Alhamdulillah. Thumma, Alhamdulillah. The praises for Allah, the praises for Allah, and then the praises for Allah. So I have uh, being mindful of the time. Um, Allah has placed us here, uh, not just as individuals, but he's placed us here um, to be in community, uh, to be representations of that stewardship that was, that was given to Adam, uh, alayhi salam. I know that it is, uh, uh, there's a lot of, of discourse. It is, sometimes it seems fashionable to talk about, uh, to, to mention uh, race or commitment to uh, race or racial equity and, you know, all these different things. Um, and yes, yes, we want equity. We want equality, right? But we have the burden of existing, as W.E.B. Du Bois talked about, double consciousness. We have the, the, the burden and the responsibility of understanding that we've got to be pragmatic about the, uh, the landscape, the social landscape that we are in at this particular moment. And that these terms, black, white, that they have uh, uh, importance and relevance based on this climate, right? They, they don't have any relevance. Uh, uh, they don't have any re relevance with the law, right? A law just just based upon our top law. So that's one thing. We 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 do we cannot get away from pragmatism and, and recognizing where we are. But the other part is can be seen in a title. It can be seen in um, as we understand Prophet Muhammad peace and prayers be upon him as a mercy to all the worlds. Right, this, this, this big thinking. We can see it even in the ayat itself. We created you from, uh, your Lord has created you from a single soul and then scattered you scattered you all about, you know, from it created is made and scattered from the two of them scattered you all about. There's a big picture thinking that we're being invited to look at and to see. And a source of, of, of singularity and, and a, a source of connection as well. So the other part of that is even though we have to be pragmatic, we have to accept the reality that we can see, we also have to be willing to, um, and, and uh, not just willing to, but thirst for, uh, thirst for that, that, that reality that we can't see, right? For the possibilities that we can't see that don't yet exist right now. So the aspirational identity, and right now, unfortunately, our shared identity as human beings, right? The, the uh, satanic thinking, it, it uses, it has used white supremacy to the utmost, as weak of an idea as it is, as laughable as any of the science um, that is, has come from it, as laughable as any of the ideas or observations that have been made regarding class, that have been made re regarding uh, poverty, right? There, there, there are some of these absolute nut jobs who believe that poverty it's just, it's just a, it's just a genetic thing. I, you know, it ain't nothing you can do from they always going to be poor. You know, uh, you know, absolutely asinine um, uh, uh, conclusions and ideas, but the premise is based on this perverted thinking. Right? So, but what we want is we want to embrace that human identity, right? We aspire to be able to embrace the human identity, identity, and that doesn't mean we negate the the cultural, uh, the, the healthy culture that Allah has blessed us to have. Especially, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but it, it 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 doesn't say that we that we we're trying to be a homogeneous uh, society. Allah did not make us to all be alike, right? We have our differences, and our differences are beautiful. Our differences are points where we can actually. Uh, inquire, we can learn, and we can grow, we can add to the human experience. We can make this a better and a more beautiful human experience. So that's what we aspire to. But what I was going to mention just in terms of, uh, as I uh, wind down, uh, uh, pull a lot in uh, just a few, few minutes, really. Um, nobody had to say white lives matter on the, on the news today. Um, 
both in the past seven, eight days. Nobody had to say the words white lives matter. Uh, and they didn't have to say that because their act actions, <clears throat> their actions have shown that. And they have been uh, with regard to Ukraine. And first of all, may Allah make it easy. May Allah give, give all of these people who are the victims of aggression, um, uh, who, who, have, who have been uh, removed from their homes, uh, all of these people who have, who have seen uh, loved ones um, uh, taken from them, uh, who have passed, for the families who have been separated, may Allah, may Allah uh, give them uh, his mercy, may Allah give them his peace, may Allah give peace of their hearts, uh, may Allah re reunite them, uh, may Allah make them victorious in their stand against oppression. Um, but as I tell Ami, but as I talk about the uh, the double consciousness, right? It is also an offense as we look at the conversation, the way that uh, Ukraine has been talked about, the way that the violence that has been perpetrated against these people has been talked about. Things like, you know, we just can't believe this is Europe. I, I can't believe this is happening here. I can't. These are these are people. These these are words that I've heard from uh, uh, on air reporters. You know, these are really. Um, you know, these, these are folks that you would live next door to, you know, these are, you know, just regular people, just, you know, good people. You know, I just can't believe this is happening here. They don't deserve that. Right. And you start like, okay, so you don't have the dog whistle at this point because white supremacy, right? White lives meaning more than anybody else's lives has been baked into the global consciousness. Right. So it's unfortunate that many white people who, who would, or who identify as white, who are categorized as white. And I got my own, um, I guess my own, I don't know, my own struggle. You know, I want to just lead something against that. You know, just this idea of lumping folks in uh, on that basis. But that, that's, that's for another day, another time, another place. Uh, but they would not even, might not even hear it, right? But meanwhile, well, no, before I go on, let, let me make this point here. Um, the European Union, United States, uh, their allies, uh, folks who are partial to and sensitive to uh, the construct of whiteness uh, and white bodies and their safety and well-being, uh, have openly, have given military aid, have uh, sent people to train folks, have, um, have put together a set of sanctions that, you know, and then they talk about these financial sanctions against Russia and against some of their, you know, oligarchs and, you know, their, their rich folks. Unimaginable. Like, they just really dropped the hammer. I'm going to say we have the unfortunate responsibility of pointing out inequality, of pointing out inequity, um, of pointing out prejudice, right, of pointing out the, uh, the, the uh, application of, of interest, Right, that favors one and disfavors another. We have the responsibility of pointing that out. That's not trying to ruffle feathers and make waves. But if the book did not come with a sense of interest or a uh, an advantage that was for one people, then why would we as Muslims stand by and 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 simply watch watch as favor is given to one, while the people in Tigray and uh, Ethiopia, the folks in Mali. The people in Burkina Faso, in the Congo, the people of uh, of, of, of Palestine, Syria, uh, you know, and we can just keep going down the list, right? We can go keep going down the list, and then the folks right here, whose blood is being shed, whose blood is being shed by misapplied and misused authority, right? Without consequence, right? Why would we not point that out? We have a responsibility to point that out because what we are working for is not, is not the uh, superiority of black people, right? Those classified as black. Once again, I'm getting myself in trouble because these are much larger conversations. I don't mean trouble as in um, I'm saying something that, I, you know, that I'm second guessing myself about, but things that really require a lot more unpacking, right? Even the label of being black. Right. In, in itself, it, it deserves, you know, uh, inquiry. But we are where we are. We are where we are. So Allah has given us this book. He has given us guidance. He has given us the prophetic example and character. He has given us sound leadership. Right. 
He has given us a, 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 a teacher and whether you listen to him directly or indirectly, because there, there are many more, more folks who have heard from Imam Muhammad uh, indirectly than they have directly at this point in time. But if you consider yourself a student of Imam Warthabi Muhammad, then you've got to follow that matter through to the log its logical conclusion and ask yourself, are you ready for the test? Because students just don't just study for the sake of acquiring knowledge. Students study because they are ready to apply that knowledge. They study because they are ready for the test to be given. And the test is one, are we ready to stand up and exhibit the character, they exhibit the character uh, that was uh, exemplified by Bilal ibn Rabbah, and may Allah be pleased with him, right? Who we were called, we were called Bilalians at one point. That was our identity. And it had much more to do with uh, that spirit than it did of color. I mean, yes, there were references to that, quite clear, but the spirit of unbreakable tawheed, unbreakable commitment. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can take away from us that will cause us to abandon this message, this clear guidance, this clear responsibility that has been placed upon us as inheritors of the authority in us, as inheritors of the stewardship that Allah has placed within our father Adam alayhi salam, and we are the inheritors and the executors of that. So it is incumbent upon us to call out those things that bring about division, that call out those things that bring about prejudice, that bring about inequality and equity, right? We are up to the test. So I may have to go back and think about that, Bilalian. You know, I, I haven't forgot about that. I haven't forgot about that. I know many of you also think about that. But, but may Allah bless us to rise to the occasion. May Allah keep our hearts open. May Allah continue to allow us to stand up firm for justice. May Allah allow us to continue calling out those things which degrade us, which take away from the value that he has placed in each and every one of us. May Allah keep us connected. May Allah protect those who are enduring oppression wherever. May Allah continue to protect our families. May Allah bless us with good health. May Allah bless us to receive the word that he's given us and allow it to empower us and ennoble us and allow us to stand up firm in this life. And inshallah, we be raised up, standing up high and firm and strong and, and, uh, and content, knowing that we have received the blessing of Allah and that he is pleased with us. And we are those who are blessed to enter his paradise. Amen. Amen.